If I had a dollar for every time someone asked me why Harley Davidson made the Street 500, I would have, well, I mean, realistically, I'd probably have like 50 bucks. The Harley Streets were introduced in 2014. They were the newest model family since the V-Rod about 13 years prior, and they came in two sizes, the 500 and the 750. There's essentially three reasons why Harley made the street models. The first reason, and maybe the biggest reason, was to enter the Asian markets, specifically India. The street with its smaller displacement and easy urban handling was a viable choice for Indian commuters in big cities. And I'm sure you've all seen the pictures of what traffic looks like in India. Imagine trying to drive through this on a limited. And actually, I'm sure most of the Indians could do it because they're used to this kind of thing, but it just looks kind of difficult. So Harley opened a factory in India, building bikes for India. Just for anyone who still thinks that US bikes are still built in India, they are not. And it's honestly one of the smartest things a business can do is tap into the Indian market. India has the second largest population in the world, second to China. Its GDP has quadrupled in the last 15 years. And with a population that size, seeing discretionary income become disposable income, a manufacturer who could tap into that market could make a lot of money. With that said, Harley-Davidson wasn't the only manufacturer looking to flood the Indian market. Most recently, the Czech-made motorcycle company Jawa was licensed by an Indian manufacturer Mahindra & Mahindra, and they started reintroducing the Jawa motorcycles. And I just read an article where they opened two dealerships in Pune, India. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It might be Pune, India. But they're only selling three models, and the models have been popular there going into the 80s and 90s. They went bankrupt in 98, and so they haven't seen them. So technically it's a reintroduction. So the next five years will be a proverbial drag race to see which manufacturers can get a piece of the market share in India. Bringing it back to the States for number two is learning to ride. Before the streets came out, Harley Davidson's Rider's Edge taught people how to ride on the Buell Blast. The problem was production on the Buell Blast ended in 2009. And for people trying to work a clutch, learning how to turn, uh, learning how to shift, they were being dropped all the time. They were just, people just really beat the shit out of these bikes. So for 2014, every Harley that had the Rider's Edge program was using really beat up, half decade old Buell Blast. And because Buell parted ways with Harley in 09, it was a pain in the ass for the technicians to get parts, to work on them, and it was just a huge headache. So when the streets came out in 2014, they rebranded Rider's Edge and called it the Riding Academy. And instead of the Buell Blast, they used the Street 500 outfitted with crash bars, so they were basically indestructible. This also allowed new riders to ease into the model families. At our dealership, we track our conversion rate, which is essentially how many graduates go on to buy a Harley Davidson. And of that number, the majority of them either buy a street, which they learned on, or a Sportster. On top of that, Harley Davidson intermittently runs promos that can ease new buyers up into the next Harley family. The third reason is customization. In 2015, Harley introduced, or it might have been late 2014, one of those, Harley introduced the Custom Kings build-off. Participating Harley-Davidson dealerships would have carte blanche to do whatever they want to do in terms of customization to a Street 500 or a Street 750. The only rule was the budget was 10 grand and you had to turn in an invoice showing that you didn't go over 10 grand. And we saw some really badass custom bikes. The premise was for a dealership to make a four-man team two techs, someone from marketing, and someone from service to kind of run the whole thing. The dealership that I worked at at the time drew up sort of a Euro bobber style. And our bike actually won regionals, which is I think all Florida Harley-Davidson's and a couple in Georgia. But as soon as we went to the States, it was impossible. People were building really astounding bikes. Some might say a little too astounding. And I still have my suspicions. How did that bike only cost 10 grand to make? Yellowstone Harley. You guys won the entire thing. Wait, did they win the entire thing? Yeah, they won the entire thing. At any rate, it really showed people that you could literally sit down with a pen and a pad and draw your dream bike, and you could probably build it on the street. Any style, any color. And a lot of dealerships were now familiar with building these crazy builds because they participated in the Custom Kings. And a couple years later, Harley Davidson released their own customized bike, the Street Rod. And I'll throw this in as an honorary reason why Harley built the street. It looked like they were trying to reach the younger demographic, which is a pretty hard thing for Harley to do for multiple reasons. If you remember the commercials when they first released them, it was like a dark cityscape with a couple millennials running around, probably drinking craft beers with an edgy version of Come Together playing. And while there are plenty of people riding streets out on the road today, I just don't think it can compete with the metrics that are out there. 
for the same price and a lot more power. But stay tuned because the bikes that Harley has announced for 2020, 2021, and 2022 are more than likely going to mend that gap. The MSRPs haven't been released yet, so I guess we'll wait for that before we say anything definitely. But I like to think of the street models as sort of a slow ease into what Harley was planning all along. Sort of a starting course to prime us for what's going to happen in the years to come. That's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you next time.